Hey everyone, welcome to 29th Basics of JavaScript video in which we're going to cover something known as reduce for arrays. It's also a popular and commonly used methods for arrays. So I just want to cover it real quick. So what it allows us is, as the name suggests, reduces the array to a single value. It's particularly useful for, you know, numbered arrays where you want to do a computation on all the numbers, but at the same time reduce them to a single value. So let's just create an array with the let our arrays 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? And we know the sum of all these elements is 55, but uh, let's just compute it using reduce. So what reduce does is uh, you can see that it accepts a function inside its, you know, curly parenthesis. And what this function does is that this consists of two arguments the first one is um, you can say the accumulator and the second one is the current value right so accumulator is whatever you have done so far with the values right and current value is the element right so what happens is that when, when you do something like this accumulator by default would be the index zeroth index value and current value would start from this one, right? So what I'm gonna do is return accumulator plus current value. And I'm just gonna say constant result is this thing. I'm gonna just console log this result so that we can see that our answer is 55, right? So what's happening here? At first iteration, at first iteration, what happens is accumulator is one, right? And current value is 2. At second iteration, accumulator is 1 plus 2, that is 3. Current value, value is 3, right? So you can see that it goes on so on and so forth unless we hit 55 and uh, we hit current value as 10. Not, not really 55, 45 and current value is 10. Then, um, yeah. Right at the last iteration, this is the case, and then we finally return 45 plus 10, that is 55. So you can see right now we are running this function, this particular piece of function, eight times, right? Two, three, four, five, up to 10, that is nine times, not really eight times. So we are running this function nine times. But what happens if I pass in a second argument here, let's say zero? Hmm. We still get 55, which is correct. By the way, this zero is the initial accumulator value. But now the difference is the loop starts from accumulator having a value of zero and current value having a value of one. So the thing here is, if you observe, now when you provide accumulator a value, an initial value, then the loop runs 10 times, with starting with index one, right, index zero. But if you don't provide it a value, then the loop runs nine times with accumulator taking in the first value, the first index, and the current value being starting from the next index. So this is kind of like somebody can ask you how many times this function executes. So you should know. And by the way, we can just quickly verify that by, let's just say, we create a count here, and we just do a count plus plus, and we just console log the count instead right hit save we see the function runs nine times not ten times however if i provide it a uh, you know initial value to accumulator you see that the function now runs ten times which is pretty cool right so there's no difference between providing a zero here or not but you know sometimes you would need to provide accumulator an initial value so there you go so yeah i guess that's it for this video and i'll see you there in the next one